Hey guys, Drifter here, welcome to Black Ops 3 In Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be reviewing the XR2 Assault Rifle, and before I get too far into the review, I want to show you the biggest fail I've had all week. I creep down here and I think I'm going to shoot this guy through the glass. Somehow the glass and the water absorbed all of my shots through randomly spraying, I managed to kill him, and then I managed to pull off some heroics and turn it around into an in-depth worthy clip, but I thought that you would find that funny. The XR2 is a very popular weapon in hardcore, in core, and every type of public match, and the professional players use this weapon all the time, so I'm going to try to do a very thorough job here today on in-depth. The first thing we need to talk about is the damage. It'll deal 40 damage up close and 30 at a distance, and that's kind of it. There's no medium damage range with this weapon. It's either 40 or 30, and that is very high damage. To put some perspective on it, it has the best in-class damage with the exception of the Shiva, and it's tied with the Man of War, but, except, but of course it shoots faster than the Man of War. So the XR2 pumps out the exact same damage that the Man of War does, which means that it is either a three or four shot kill weapon. That's three shots up close, and we'll discuss ranges in a little bit close. It's kind of silly when it comes to this weapon, or four shots at long ranges, though it's usually a two burst kill, even though it's a three burst assault rifle. That's because your shots are a little wonky, and we'll talk about accuracy later on. But let's talk about the three shot kill range, which is 38 meters. That is a very, very good three shot kill range. If you can get your shots on target, that is impressive. That drops people incredibly fast. Unfortunately, I don't feel that the weapon's accuracy is up to par with its range, and I find it highly unlikely that you will be getting very many three-shot kills all the way out at 30 meters. The headshot multiplier is 1.1x, which makes it useless at all ranges, because 40 times 1.1 is 44, and 30 times 1.1 is 33, which doesn't change your shots to kill at any range. And the sad thing is, I find it pretty easy to get headshots with this weapon, and I do have a tendency to go for headshots with it just out of habit, just that old FPS thing, you want to shoot people in the head when you can, even though I know it's not useful, I just, I, I can't help but to go for it. Though I would like to point out the clip in the beginning and the one you see with the recon site I do have on high caliber, and it can be pretty nasty with high caliber, drop people very quickly. Speaking of quickly, let's talk about the rate of fire. The rate of fire of the burst, or how fast your bullets are coming out of the gun per burst, is 857 RPM, which is rather fast. It's not the fastest in the game, it's not quite like super fast, but for assault rifles that is an impressive amount of speed. I think only outclassed by the M8A7. And the burst fire delay is unfortunately kind of slow at 200 milliseconds. That's like one of those old school ones like the SWAT 556 or kind of like the ones from like COD 4 MW2. It's kind of slow, kind of annoying, makes this weapon more awkward feeling and mastering the, uh, the, the pace of the burst fire is what will separate the good XR2 players from the, we'll say, mediocre ones. However, you can hold down the fire button to full auto burst it at maximum speed. It'll fire the burst with the minimum delay as fast as possible. All you have to do is hold down the trigger, which is an excellent feature in this game, and it's one that I would highly recommend doing. I've been playing COD games forever, so I forget about this all the time, and I think I need to manually burst it when I don't, and in almost all of the gameplays you see, the ones where I just hold down the trigger and let the gun do the work for me, that's where I play better, that's where I get the better kill-death ratios, and that is the strategy that I would recommend to you as well. An interesting side note, rapid fire will reduce your burst delay, and that makes it not a bad attachment. It only does 6% on most weapons, but reducing the burst fire delay may not increase your time to kill a whole lot, but it'll increase the handling, the feel of this weapon, and make it feel much easier to use, and it'll also be much more forgiving because there's less time between your bursts. So if you feel like running rapid fire on the XR2, it's totally fine. Go for it. Let's talk about time to kill. This weapon has the fastest up-close time to kill in the entire assault rifle class, with the exception of the Shiva getting you know, the high caliber one shot headshots. Now, outside of the insta kill there, this does outclass the Shiva, it outclasses the M8, the KN44. This is the fastest killing assault rifle in the entire game, and it has an overall fast time to kill at almost every range. There's pretty much no range at which this weapon is bad when it comes to time to kill, and I think that's why the competitive or professional players like it, because this weapon can dump truck people super fast up close. You can beat out SMGs, of course, that's if you hit your burst. Uh, magazine size is is 30. Extended mags is 42. I think I ran extended mags once while I was kind of leveling up this weapon and learning it, and even though I didn't think I would need it, extended mags turned out to be kind of fun, kind of useful, especially because when I hold down the trigger and spam, it just, it gave me more room to do that, less time reloading and all those sort of things. The iron sights are usable, though I feel they're vastly improved with optics. I'm, I'm kind of a hater on iron sights. I'm picky. I know I'm a scrub, whatever. These I can use. 
damage. I can hit people. They're clear enough, but they're a little bit obtrusive. They're not perfect. And on a weapon that requires such precision and such accuracy, I vastly prefer some kind of optics. Red dot sight, elo sight. You know what? Thermal sight is surprisingly effective. You might not think the thermal sight is good on assault rifles, but it definitely does work on the XR2. Even the thermal sight gameplay that you're seeing here on this in depth could have definitely been better if I wasn't just goofing around and running a suppressor on it. You'll even see competitive players put like a thermal sight on the XR2. Very, very effective. If you have it unlocked, dude, give the thermal sight a go. Even the Varix or the Recon can work. Just some kind of optics is going to be a better bet than the iron sights. When it comes to recoil, this I feel is very important. It has overall low recoil, but I'm going to say about one third of your burst or one out of your three shots may wobble, which makes it somewhat inconsistent. Wobble is not a very clear word, but if you pull the trigger, it's going to shoot three bursts. Uh, the first two are pretty much going to be dead on target, and for some reason, the third shot just has this big tendency to just jump to the left or right, just kind of just kind of kick on that last shot and drag it away. So it is more difficult to one burst people than what I would like for an assault rifle of this caliber. Within certain ranges, of course, it doesn't matter. I find myself jerking the gun from side to side sometimes to try and compensate for this because I feel like the M8 is a better weapon in this regard. The M8 is very precise, even though it may not be as accurate. So the wobble and the difficulty with your burst is really the more limiting factor on your on your kill range than the actual range of the weapon. It has standard assault rifle hip fire spread, but is surprisingly not bad with a laser sight just because of how fast it kills up close. Like normally I would tell you not to do it with a burst fire weapon or generally any assault rifle, but if you get lucky and you get a shot or two and you can dump truck people pretty quickly with hip fire with this weapon. Another fun fact about the XR2 is that it has a movement speed of 96.5%, whereas a normal assault rifle has a move speed of 95%, so you'll be running a little bit faster with the XR2 than you will with any other assault rifle. And I mean, any, no other assault rifle has this property. If you value movement speed, this is a good bet because you're just going to be moving a little bit faster. I'm going to give a random shout out to Brass Monkey's Ultimate Utility app, which is where I get some of this information from. I'm going to be working with him to bring you the Ask Drifter app later this year, but if you're interested in the Ultimate utility which has all the stat charts and everything you'll find it linked down there in the description aim down sights for the xr2 is 250 milliseconds average for class nothing super special though i do prefer the quick draw grip because it is a precision weapon it's a snap aim weapon i like aiming down sights very quickly and not relying on hip fire so quick draw grip is highly preferred reload time is two seconds flat 2.0 seconds however you want to read that which makes it the fastest reloading assault rifle in its class i believe the kn44 is close at two 2.03 seconds, which is almost the same. But either way, the point that you you know your take home here is that it reloads very fast, so you won't have to worry about anything like that. And it has a medium wall penetration factor, making it relatively easy to wall bank. Shouldn't have a problem nailing people through walls. And now we're going to hit the subjective part of the in-depth where I recommend some classes and talk about how the weapon is best used and how it ranks up, etc. etc. It feels kind of like the COD 4 M16 and the Black Ops 2 SWAT 556 got drunk one weekend at Vegas and had a three-way with Vonderhaar and they all had this little baby and that baby was named the XR2 because it really is kind of like between the M16 and the BO2 SWAT with just a little touch of Von to make it fair which actually makes it a good weapon. It is an excellent up-close assault rifle if you're accurate if you hit your burst it can kill people faster than almost anything and it's good at medium range too because any range where you can get that three shot kill very very good. Unfortunately I feel that it is outclassed by the M8A7 for long range because of the wobble and the accuracy and because the M8A7 has about the same range components, it's more precise, it's easier to use, but the XR2 is definitely better for close and medium range. And I think that this is a probably the best burst assault rifle for smaller maps, one of the better assault rifles for smaller maps in general, and it's an excellent overall weapon. It's no surprise people like it in core and hardcore and competitive and zombies and all this kind of stuff, because it's a very, very good weapon, and if you're just looking for a new weapon to master and you unlock something to work on, I would definitely recommend the XR2. When it comes on how to run this, I'm going to be doing it differently than usual. Typically, I run like a very few attachments and lots of perks. I think this one is best with you have to have optics and long barrel, even though it probably makes it longer the range than you can three shot with, is very valuable because it just jacks your damage up out the, through the roof for assault rifles and just loads of attachments. Just load this thing down with all the attachments you want. You want grip? Yeah, grip. Go for grip. You like stock? Dude, stock. Stock. I like stock. I think it makes it a lot easier to kind of sidestep and aim laser sight fast mag uh, you know extended mag whatever it is that you want any kind of optics it doesn't matter just load this thing down with attachments and make it an absolute beast 
When I was done with mine, it ended up looking something like this. I ran the ELO site, long barrel, I ran quick draw, stock, foregrip, and I decided to put the prestige camo on it just for fun. And this worked really well for me. I think something like this will work very well for you too, either in arena mode or just here in regular matches. Guys, that is all for this in-depth episode. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something useful. If you did, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. The previous episode was on long barrel versus suppressor, and the next episode is probably, if I have my whole situation together, going to be on high caliber. Drifter out.